Purser's past tale. Percy has been working here on Tasman Tasman Sodor for many years. Some years ago, he was on a trip to Tasmania. Things weren't good as the other railway was behaving like it never had common sense, and Dr. Baron Beeching was causing the trouble for some engines who were doing the work, but with a fight things were looking hopeless for them. Percy was made and was taken to live on Sodor. He was doing the trip work and was ignoring British Railways ways when it was in some odd mind. He came to the mainland and was doing the work of taking bread to the shops. Dr. Beeching was wanting to hunt it down when he was trying to keep the railway running. That was in 1988. He didn't want to meet Dr. Beeching because he knows he was uneducated and was a criminal. When he arrived to Australia, he went hiding. He saw him take talking to the owner who ran the place. He told him he didn't know him and he left with bad anger. Percy was lucky he didn't meet him the first time, but he did when his secret work was closed and he had to escape, which he did. He went running back to Sodor, but he kept his tale a secret. One night, Percy went to bed. He was thinking of his good or bad memory. Thomas asked him, What's with the gun face? Um, nothing, Thomas. I'll tell you later. He went to sleep. One day, in the mainland, Percy arrived to take over a engine's place. He was to take the bread to the shop. I just hope I can enjoy my holiday. I want it to last good, he told his driver. Well, I hope so too, said the driver. Percy was to keep an eye open for Dr. Beeching, Dr. Baron Beeching. He was to pop up anywhere in the mainland of Australia, but there was no sign of him. His feelings went calm as he took the bread to the shops. That uneducated man doesn't know what he's talking about. And he doesn't know what life is like, he told me. It's a good thing we've come to Australia, Percy, said the driver. Let me tell you this. It will get you edu educated than him. It sure will spare it away. <clears throat> Dr. Baron Beeching was a member of a hospital. He used to help people who were sick, but he got tired of it. He retired and was elected as chairman. He was a criminal monster, that man. He wouldn't care for any engines that has common sense. Many engines have a fight. They never use common sense. Dr. Beeching was always at large. He closed every railway. So,
me what left we were left and were brought by other people to stop his non-common sense way some of the engines like dog was hating her first life and hated Dr. Beachy being chairman now today is still one and has heard about our first home becoming a great place to work in he wasn't happy and was wanting one of your engines to visit England oh dear he was up to no good so we tricked him by coming to Australia for holiday where to lead him here and let Princess Lorna you met to sort him out Percy was shocked when he heard this dreadful news told from him oh no he hates our serious we can't let him do this criminal work he's gone too far Lorna's to have him killed and it's to be kept a secret just as he finished work he saw the figure he knew who it was oh no that's Dr. Beeching he's after me still trying to hide we tricked him so where to pretend we're not here he went to a branch line and hid behind some trees somewhere Dr. Beeching looked around the railway so Percy has come here, eh? Has he? But I might seek him out if I ask this manager. He came across a manager who had been reading the paper all the time and didn't see Percy. Pardon me, sir, he said. Have you seen an engine called Percy? The man said when he asked that question said to him rather lamely Percy? Who's Percy? That little tank engine that has been on television for too long I'm to scrap him Why do you want to scrap him? I hate him Don't you realize it's time this Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends program is to be forgotten and I'm to be in a diesel television series. The man laughed. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but Thomas can't be forgotten. It's you that needs to be forgotten. Bah! I knew you people would turn against me. Percy, who was finding his branch line, was hoping Dr. Beeching wouldn't see him. But he forgot about his smoke that always lurks from his funnel. He could sense it like any dog can. Hmm. Got you, Percy. I know you're heading somewhere and you're not going to it. I don't care what your tricks are. I'm wanting to have you scrapped. 
And I don't care about anything that has been born. Oh, so I, the beaching man. Now listen to me. I've asked some man I wanted your friend's service forgotten because I hate it. You can't have purses scrapped if you're taking him to England or here in Australia. It's law breaking. Shut your stupid driver. I'm trying to explain why I'm wanting your number six engine. Try and explain whenever you like, sir. He told me you were an uneducated man. You used to be a doctor in hospital, but when you retired you were hating trains, and today you were hating me. So I came here to drag you through to anyone that turns against you. That man you told the tale to is someone you wouldn't like to mess with. What is this, some magic? I don't believe in that rubbish. Oh, you think it's rubbish? Well, my fireman must show you the manager who didn't see me. The fireman stepped down from the cabin Talk out the man from somewhere. He was hiding. Percy's right, Dr. Baron Beachy. It's a good thing you told me your rubbish tale, because I have this to show you. The man formed himself into Nightmare Moon. Glad. You've met me. Dr. Beachy seemed rather shocked at the sight of her. What is this person? Some kind of joke? <laughs> Just listen to her. You'll regret what you're trying to do to me. No, of course. I'm trying to do my job here. I do not understand engines' cases. Don't you call me a horse. I'm a pony. You don't know what tis. You don't know what you don't know is you have turned yourself into a scoundrel. If you weren't hired, this badness with British railways would not have any problems. I'm not saying sorry because I hate en this engine. That has a pseudo railway I wanted to invade. Never insult any engine in front of me. Shall I give him some punishment, Percy? Yes, Nightmare Moon. Give what you can give him. Heart sickness. She said she did a spell and muttered some magic words. Suddenly, as if by a second, the empty sickness spell got him falling to the ground. Ah! What kind of performance are you playing at? Just for once, sir. Shut up and eat the empty sickness you'll get. Please make it stop very well. Oh, I can feel my... His sight's full again. It's not over yet. 
What? What are you doing, Percy? Giving you a cut on the leg. Keeping still. You got it covered. Dr. Beachy was struggling like mad when Percy gave him a deadly piece of his mind. Stop, please! I've got my mother! I miss her very much. She died a long time ago before I was elected as Stop this! I need stop this minute. I'll leave you alone. Well, that will teach you a lesson, you bully man. Now you promise not my mourn. Then she'll let you go. So Doctor the weak leg of Doctor Beeching was taken off the line. He now knew he couldn't stop Percy's friends serious. Sign this paper, Dr. Beeching, as a promise that you'll leave the Thomas program alone. If you break it, you'll regret another punishment. He did, and then he limply walked away to telephone for the hospital. This railway has been closed for years, Percy. I have been running it to make your holiday great. You did this? Oh, well, I thank you, um, I finished the work, the first one. Am I to leave? Yes. Your tale will be told to your friends about this affair when you go home. So Percy went steaming all the way home. He heard Dr. Beeching calling after him. be done. Percy, but there is some bad engines I told to hunt you down. You've got me sore. I'm not saying sorry, sir. <laughs> I'll get you for this next time. This person left Australia. He will accompany her Thomas's voice. You've been dreaming again, Percy. Oh, I thought I'd tell you right away instead of tomorrow. Um, I dreamt I was on holiday when Dr. Beeching was after me because he wanted to stop your program. Oh, yeah, I remember that tale you told me. And us, said the other engines. It's 5 a.m., so you might tell us about it. So Percy told them the same tale. And? One of them might notice Luna would be lurking anywhere, listening to him tell his tale.